Hi, and welcome to CloudAcademy.com's video series on Google Cloud Platform, The Basics. In this video, we're going to discuss resource management on Google Cloud Platform, why everything revolves around projects, and how and why to manage disks and snapshots. First, let's talk about projects. Everything really does seem to revolve around a project. You can't launch an instance. You can't create a disk or manage a disk or any other resource for that matter without first creating a project and of course entering your billing information into the project's registry. Now why does the Google paradigm require projects? Amazon's AWS service doesn't really have a direct corollary. What is it about projects that Google likes? I think it's the ability to manage very carefully and precisely every aspect of your operation. You can, for instance, create a project with particular team members, team members that might be given access to instances and disks on this project, but not on other projects. You might want to bill and pay for a project using one credit card, but a different project may be being done for a different client or for a different company or for yourself personally. You want to use a different credit card or a different payment source. You can enable and control access to firewalls, networks, routes, persistent disks for one project. You'd like the members of one project to have access to these resources, but not a different project. It actually is a very nice way to organize a large and complicated operation. So projects work. Let's try one out. Let's click on Go to My Console, which of course only works once you're signed in. We already have one project called Exploration. Let's create a new one. Let's allow it to be called My Project 3. And it's given automatically a project ID, Poetic Dreamer 719. You can choose your own or generate a different random one, relatively random one, from the seemingly endless source of project ID ideas. And we'll create it. The project exists. We can't actually launch an instance or do much with it until we configure a particular billing source. But let's click on Permissions, where we can add or remove members. We can add a member by entering his email and giving him one of three permission profiles. He's either the owner, in which case he has control over everything you do, or he can edit, or he can view. We're not going to add anybody right now. I don't know anybody that I like enough to include in this particular project. We can, by clicking on Billing and Settings, rename or re-edit, edit the billing information, or delete the project. And right now, in fact, I'd like to delete it because this project I don't really need for practical purposes right now. We would type in or cut and paste the project ID. I think they do this just to make sure you're not randomly clicking something without being aware of what you're doing. So yes, in fact, we do want to delete this project. And it's gone. We're back to our single project exploration. Let's click there. And let's look at snapshots. But first, we'll take a quick look at VM instances. What do we have running right now? There is one LAMP server that we created for a previous video called LAMP FLIS. It exists and is currently up and running. And it also has a disk known as LAMP FLIS M4MV, an inspiring name if ever there was one. But let's bear that in mind. The disk, which effectively is the container for all the data being used by that LAMP server, has this name. Let's now move to snapshots. Let's create a new snapshot. I'll explain why we might want to do that in a minute. But first, we'll leave the default name for the new snapshot as snapshot1. We'll describe it as the disk or a copy of the disk that is currently used by the LAMP server. And we'll select a disk source. Let's, the only one we have available in our project is LAMP FLIS M4 MV. We'll select that. What we are doing is taking the disk as it currently exists and cloning it. We're making an exact copy of it in its current state. 
and making that image available to be used in other instances. Let's create the snapshot. The snapshot exists and is ready to be used. Let's go back to VM Instances. Let's click on New Instance. Get rid of this little box again. Let's leave the name for this instance, or let's give it a new name. Let's be really creative and call it Instance 2. That'll throw them. We can configure it to allow HTTP traffic or not to allow it, as the case may be. We can configure the location and resources, the machine type. I'm going to do F1 Micro. It's the smallest and least expensive. But boot source. What media should be used as a boot drive for our new instance? It could be a brand new disk from an image, a, a standard Debian or CentOS image, a new disk from a snapshot or an existing disk. Let's go with a new disk from a snapshot. Which snapshot should we use? Well, now there's a snapshot dialog we have to fill out, and we'll take snapshot one. That was the name of the snapshot we made from our LAMP server. We can now create a new instance without having to reconfigure and load all the packages that have to be downloaded and installed. Rather, we can take the existing disk we know works for our purposes and now spin it up for a new purpose, a new but related purpose. What disk type do you want to use? Just as we were asked by creating a regular instance, should it be a standard persistent disk or an SSD persistent disk? We'll stick with standard. And we are ready to create this instance. Let's do it. So we now have two LAMP servers up and running, each with its own external IP. And this little yo-yo of an activity box is going to disappear again. Both are built on an identical disk profile. Just we can use them now for different purposes. This has its obvious use. Let's take a look now at disks. We have the disk associated with our instance 2 and the disk associated with our LAMP server. They are at this point still probably identical, but soon enough they, they'll be used in different ways and will have their own uh, distinct profiles. But we could, by clicking on one, delete it, should we so desire. We could also create a new disk that eventually uh, could be put to use in some new instances or as data repositories for multiple instances. Either way, we see that Google Cloud Platform provides a pretty robust library of tools for managing your resources.